an incredible turnout, so thank you all so much for coming today. My name is Gravity Goldberg. I am the Director of Public Programs, and on behalf of everyone at the CJM, thank you so much for joining us today. This is an exciting turnout. So at the, at the Contemporary Jewish Museum, a lot of time, we spend a lot of time asking ourselves, what is Jewish art? Is it Jewish artists? Is it the subject that matter that's Jewish? Does that not, neither of those things matter, it's just that it's in a Jewish museum? So today we're going to reach for some of that with our gallery talk with two speaker, two artists, from the California Jewish Open, Ruth Gendler and Chesalyn Amato. The talk today is a, this is a new format that we're just trying out. So there's gonna be two 10 minute talks about the work, first with Ruth, and then we will all go on a journey to the other side of this wall, and Chesalyn will present for 10 minutes. And then following that, the two of them will be in conversation for about a half an hour, and we will then invite your questions. So if you have questions during the talks, I ask that you just like hold on to those, and then we'll make space for them at the end. California artist J. Ruth Gendler has been involved with writing, art, and interdisciplinary collaboration for most of her life. She is the author of three books that include her art, the best-selling The Book of Qualities, the award-winning Notes on the Need for Beauty, and the anthology Changing Light, the Eternal Cycle of Night and Day. Gendler's art has been exhibited nationally and featured on the covers of several books in the United States and Asia. She is a member of the California Society of Printmakers and Friends of Calligraphy, and is a teaching artist for over 35 years. She has taught through California poets and schools and offered a variety of classes for adults. And Gendler was a San Francisco Public Library laureate in 2009, and the city of Berkeley re recognized her contributions to the arts by declaring January 30th, 2018, J. Ruth Gendler Day. So everyone, please enjoy, and then the end of 10 minutes. I'm delighted and humbled mm -hmm. and honored to be here today with you at this time in this museum with some very dear old friends and family, with new friends, with Cheslin. And I'm also really humbled and delighted that the piece that was selected for my piece is called Renewal. It wasn't done at a time where I felt like I was completely renewing myself. There was a lot of loss and stagnation in my life at that time, as there continues to be in our time. And yet, renewal was also renewing, like a, I think it's called a gerund, um, between a verb and a noun. Renewing was part of the time. So I wanted to talk a little bit about peace and Sometimes it's very hard, and you'll see this in the conversation with Cheslin, everything is sort of inside and around everything else. So as soon as we say something about beauty, we're talking about radiance. As soon as we say something about light, we're talking about Jewish soul. So it's kind of a weaving rather than a linear flow. When I used to do workshops for teachers, I'd have to say I'm not a linear sequential person most of the time. But I will start by talking about this piece of renewal which was May, January 2020. I had lost my partner of 15 years in 2017. 50 weeks later, I lost my mother. Very intense losses. I attended, I wasn't seeking solace in what I now call Jewish wisdoms, practices, and communities, plural to all of them, but, um, in 2018, I did an art show at the beautiful Jewish Renewal Congregation. Several of us are here, Falkmat Halev. And in 2019, end of 2019, I attended a retreat for Jewish artists, activists, and change makers called Taproot. And about a month after I attended that retreat, and a month before, or two months before Shelter in Place, I went to the studio one day and I made this piece. 
I have always thought of myself, I think, as a Jewish writer. I don't always think of myself as a Jewish artist. And yet when I looked at my art, my symbols were really Jewish. Tree. What is more of a symbol of, of Judaism, a Jewish relationship to nature than the tree? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the tree of life, the tree in the Kabbalah, the tree of Tubishvat Seder. So here's this tree, which is a theme of a lot of my art. And people have pointed out this tree actually starts to look like a kiddish cup. Not my intention, but it's there, so great. Um, the bowls, mystic Judaism, which I'm not gonna try to illuminate, has lots of symbology. The bowl, the vessel, the well, it's been a personal symbol for me from forever. I wrote a book, which I'll talk about a little bit, called The Book of Qualities, and it starts out, the wind carries big blue bowls of rain with her. The bowl is, us, our bodies as vessel, it could be as mundane as a bowl of oatmeal. It could be a bowl of words, a book. So the bowls are very familiar with me. They come in and out of my work. And then these people, that the rational part of me is like, oh my God, they have halos, what's going on? Um, some of them I call seekers and visitors. More recently, I did an art show called Angels, Allies, and Ancestors. But the most basic um, experience I have of these people is what I call qualities. And some of the people in this room know, but many may not. I wrote a book when I was young called The Book of Qualities, in which I personified 76 attributes, starting with pleasure, ending with joy. I went on to do a couple more books. Um, to my great surprise, I started writing some new qualities. And this is very precious, very new, very tender. I'm not gonna distribute copies, but I felt like this emerging today was an opportunity to read a few new qualities. So I was thinking about this figure, kind of androgynous, but who did I associate, I'll say him, with in the Book of Qualities? And I was especially thinking because we're here about a Jewish quality. Um, and so this is something, you, it, it's slightly nodding to Kabbalah, but it's not announcing it, it's not footnoted. It's the quality of solemnity. And my first cousin is here today, and I just want to say I had a beautiful conversation with her mother, my aunt in Seattle, about solemnity. And we were talking about how there could be joy with solemnity. Solemnity, and please bear with me, this is <laughs> new, brand new, fresh. A mountain of a man. There is often tenderness or tender music in solemnity's silences. Living across from him, I'm often fascinated by the visitors who knock on his door. Philosophers and poets come from all over the world to sit in the courtyard with, his beautiful, with its beautiful fountains and flowering citrus trees. Often, solemnity follows the threads of their conversations. Sometimes, solemnity finds himself daydreaming or even sleeping as they carry on. The murmur and chorus of their debate blend into the murmur and chorus of the waters, the hum of the bridge traffic, the distant thunder. It's not true that Solemnity has no sense of humor. When he was a serious little kid, Solemnity was puzzled by what his family thought was funny and the dirty words his friends thought were hilarious. Even his teachers worried Solemnity was too serious. Most jokes still don't seem funny to Solemnity, but he knows how to be silly with his nieces and nephews. And Solemnity is no stranger to joy. He can tell a riddle across a decade. Solemnity heard the whispers of the ancestors before glimpsing what they were saying. Even on the hardest days, Solemnity remembers to give them thanks. Solemnity will never forget it's their sacrifices that opened the doors for him to live into the sacred. 
those old relatives who frightened him as a child, and the ones, the distant ones he glimpses in dreams who live closer to the ground and intimate with the sky. Thank you. Gentleness, I've written this about a hundred times, I'm not kidding. Gentleness has strong hands and a steady heart. She's no stranger to many kinds of brokenness, heartache, open war, and subtle conflicts. Gentleness, notice, gentleness notices the hidden wounds and bruises, as well as the jagged scars that anyone would see. Just because you've never heard gentleness raise her voice, or weep, or rip off the bandages, don't assume she can't or won't when necessary. After her brother failed to return from the war, gentleness was quiet for a long time, trying to understand what no one could explain. Gentleness has learned to be herself, wherever she is, whatever is going on, whoever she is with. In the process, she has become a fierce and tender guardian of what is precious and what is precarious. Gentleness yearns for the day we have language uninfected by the vocabularies of conquest. Those who are weary from fighting, soldiers and civilians alike, will be able to put down their weapons and discover new uses for their arms. So the word arm is etymologically related to the word art, by the way. Those who are weary from fighting, soldiers and civilians alike, will be able to put down their weapons and discover new uses for their arms. The slow work of mending will be honored. The quiet tasks of maintenance will be acknowledged. Gentleness walks in all kinds of weather. In her worn gray raincoat, you may not recognize her in the distance in certain storms. So last thing I'll say, I didn't talk about the monitoring process, which isn't very known. Um, usually I write underneath my work and paint over it or on the back of it. And this time I did leave the words. So the last thing I want to say now is what the words say are gratitude to the trees whose roots carry news and nourishment. Gratitude to the ancestors, which I love getting older and having more of it, <laughs> um, took a while, whose steps, whose stories live in our bones. Gratitude to our ancestors, whose stories live in our bones, and whose lives, the lives we live, are so much in um, benefit from the lives they love. Thank you all so much. <laughs>
Well, when I start with a section, uh, I'm going to invite that uh, you can join me if you want to, if you feel the resonance. Yud, hey, vav, hey, yud, hey, vav, hey, Adonai, Eloheinu, Elohai, Elohim, Yet, Yah, Shekhinah, as above, so below. of love, rapture and resonance, an overwhelming outpouring of love, an outpouring of overwhelming love, so much love, uncontainable, burst, burn, beam, shine, shine. Love, so much love, abundant, abundant, abundant. Ah. And a song of yearning and a song of courage and a song of delight about willingness, wisdom, ingenuity, about kindness, compassion, generosity, mercy, about discernment, discipline, rigor, 
tenacity, about beauty, rapture, enthrallment, about sublimity, awe, wonder, delight, about capacity, fortitude, triumph, about endurance, resilience, persistence, continuance, about effectiveness, confidence, humility, grace, fecundity, expression, productivity, about reception and transmission, about connectivity and interconnection, about reclamation, renewal, and reciprocity, about how everything is really one, about how we are all free to become part of one big huddle of love that vanquishes loneliness and affirms and confirms belonging. Let us huddle with the ones we love and who love us and with each and every single other who lives and have lived and will live upon this wild, wacky, really, really wondrous world of wonders. So, as a hospice uh, interfaith chaplain and uh, a spiritual and emotional support counselor, which I have been doing for the last about six years, I lead a, a weekly service of remembrance that, that honors the patients who have, our patients who died that week. And so, I do want to share with you a part of that offering as a way to acknowledge and express my gratitude for the sacred space we are moving together right now within the context, especially of the significant challenges happening in the greater world that holds us. We are sending light for the well-being of the world, humanity, and for all that is. We send our love and blessing for enough and for abundance to all people who are suffering and struggling with adversity, poverty, homelessness, hunger, oppression, aggression, and disenfranchisement. May all beings know, care, equanimity, balance, resilience, and sustaining hope, trust, and joy. May all people know peace and well-being. May we all thrive and stay safe. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the work, how the work's made. So let me begin by saying I've been working with this material for now about 20 years. My brother's a science writer. An article, we encountered this material, he gave me a piece. And so these last 20 years, this is my soulmate. I have this a shift between me and radiant film. So this grouping of works, which is called Beacons of Inter Four, four interconnectivity and connection, are part of a really large group of works that are called Ifluxes that use this material. Efflux means outpouring or pouring forth. And this film is a, it's mirror-like, and it is uh, iridescent, it's flexible sheet material, and when it receives light uh, directly to the surface, so either from here or from here, a range of visible frequencies is transmitted. You know, we call them colors, hues. These spectacles only exist when the radiant film receives the light. When lit from above, free form, sort of a, a kind of free form phenomena are captured on the wall above. And um, then some degree, some of the light goes through, and some of what's what's captured below is more hard edge. And so the same way, when the light comes from below, this freeform phenomena happens below, and then the, ray, the rays that go through, we see a harder edge. So just to say, the film is attached to wire that has been shaped, a line wire that's been shaped, that's mounted on the wall. And the wall is, in effect, catching or capturing the of light. You know, you might say, like, uh, how a canvas catches the marks and gestures. So there's a primary structure that's guiding this particular group of pieces that's determining a lot about the way they look. It's 
So this is called, that, so it's the Fibonacci sequence, just simply. It's the sequence of mathematical numbers that causes this to happen. And I will just show you. See if I add extra. And so, so what's happened is I'm, this is a custom light that I've, I've designed and getting very, very close to having it be wireless. The beautiful good fortune in the gallery here is that the cords are behind the wall. Mm -hmm. So thank you. As she was finishing up, talking about the material that she went worked with, to expand a little on this wonderful word radiance. And inside that word is light, and radiance is certainly a quality of beauty, which we will get to next. But to continue with this thoughts about radiance. Well, you know, I mean, I think you can tell from the sort of poetics um, that I just, I love words. They're like visual, they are very visual to me, but it's just the sound. So there's word meaning, and then there's also sound and how evocative it is, and then sound, where it comes from in the body. And uh, so radiance, which is a extension pouring out into its effluxing radiant light lantern lamp beacon menorah drawing to and drawing from emitting and ingressing receiving and transmitting radical resplendent radiance I just wanted to say something briefly about light. When I was in high school, we read a poem called 13 Ways of Looking at a Blackbird, which was were quick five-line stanzas, snapshots, um, perspective on blackbirds. I don't have it, but I wrote a poem called Seven Ways of Looking at Candlelight. And what I remember about it was I was very much alternating, probably high romantic, secular images of light with Jewish images of the Havdalah, Six Flame, the Menorah, and the Shabbat. So we are going to uh, move to another topic uh, called beauty. And so I am going to ask Ruth to reflect a little bit on the word beauty. She has written the most magnificent book all about beauty, and I really recommend it to everyone. It is an incredible meditation, an incredible gift to us all. So I call it the book that ate the decade. Um, <laughs> so when I wrote this early book, The Book of Qualities, I, I wrote a quality of beauty. I think I know it by heart. Beauty is startling. She wears a gold shawl in the summer and sells seven kinds of honey. I say that at the flea market, now I'd say at the farmer's market. She's young and old at once, my daughter and my grandmother. In school, she excelled in mathematics and poetry. Beauty doesn't anger easily, but she was annoyed with the journalist who kept asking about her favorites, as if beauty would have one favorite color or one favorite flower, or now I would say one favorite language. Beauty doesn't mind questions, and she's fond of riddles. Beauty will dance with anyone who is brave enough to ask her. So I would read this quality, and particularly in the late 80s, early 90s, women loved this idea that beauty will dance with anyone who's brave enough to ask her, because it took it out of the world of appearance. And it suggested that beauty is an energy, it moves between us, it's responsible to, it's responsive to courtesy, it beauty moves. 
So, okay, but I really needed to find out what this line meant. And I went on this quest. We've been talking about questions and whether we like them or not, or when we like them. The word question has quest in it, right? So I went on this quest to find out what I meant. Beauty will dance with anyone who's brave enough to ask her. And out of that, I worked for a long time on this book. And to be very succinct about it, I would say beauty is the connection between the intimate, you know, the intimate in our lives, the intimate little fine fringed fern, and the immense, the starlight, the big questions. So that's one way I see beauty traveling the route between intimacy and immensity. Or another way to say it more in the intimate is to say beauty is the connection between our senses and our souls. I can say more, but I won't right now. Um, it's a great, it was a terribly challenging project, as every book is for me, maybe for everyone. Um, but I was like, this is great. I'm so grateful for this. I could have to be, be happy to write a book about greed or jealousy or, I don't know what, um, fear. But instead, I got to write a book about love. Yay for us. <laughs> so that leads to another question, which is courage? Um, yes, I just want to say about oh, beauty. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, that's okay. Make beauty to invoke beauty. Make something beautiful as an invocation to beauty to appear. Make something beautiful as an invocation to beauty to descend amongst us and shield us from all that is not. Gesture plus geometry equals nature plus artifice equals sublimity awe, wonder, and delight equals beauty. So the reason I jumped in <laughs> was I was starting to think about courage. And so my question for Cheslin, who has this amazing courage to appear in the world with so much spirituality, with so much love, and is well, courage has a word hard in it, but where do you source your courage, the courage to shine? What does courage mean to you? So we did talking about it. And, yes. You know, um, about, about fear, courage and fear going together. Courage to take the leap to live because there's living and there's dying and it takes courage to live and courage is the thing that compete can compete with death and dying you can live live fully take the risk so i say humility and chutzpah confidence with humility so Costume, apparel, and garb for courage, confidence, chutzpah, and oof. <laughs> Let the priest, priestess in ourselves rise up and engage with courage and humility. Courage. <laughs> It well, I will say, it takes a lot of courage to be an artist. It takes a lot of courage to do many, many things, but it takes a lot of courage to be an artist, and it's an honor, I think, for both of us to be artists among artists, among Jewish artists, among people who came from really diverse backgrounds into this show and really diverse expressions. So I just want to say, it takes courage, it certainly takes courage to be quiet and to listen. It takes a lot of courage to speak and express in the world right now. Mm -hmm.
so true. So, we're now going to explore the arena of language. And so I'm going to ask Ruth to expand on this word, language. So, I have made up a silly thing a long time ago that the Jewish part of me was a writer and the artist part was not so Jewish. And then I found out I had all these Jewish symbols and synchronicities in my work. But I feel like language is a very um, strong place where I connect with Jewish soul. Um, my father was very witty. I not only like school, which is bad enough, I actually like Sunday school. I like learning about the ancient goddesses. Um, I like some of the bits of false messiah and things that we were learning about. I like the language of the prayer book. I like to consecrate. I like to dedicate. And as I've gotten older, and my first introduction to etymology was through Latin, this incredible respect in Hebrew, not only for songs or narrative, but for um, the alphabet. And it's, uh, I have a calligraphy teacher here. It's been a great joy that after tasting calligraphy for a year, I have come back to beginning to study calligraphy, which is such a synthesis of word and picture. Um, I could say more, but I'm gonna stop now. I may come back and have a little poem about I don't know where it is. Well, <laughs> so I might say about language because it was at first when Ruth raised language and I thought, I don't know how it, word into image, image into word. I've been really integrating word and image forever and ever more. And my early work was actually using words to generate images. So they really became mark, mark and mark alone. So I'm going to say Judaic sensibility and ethics in relationship to beauty and beauty and radiance underpin my poetics of image and word. So, Aleph, Bet, Bet, Gimel, Dalit, Hey, Gematria, a numerical system by which Hebrew letters correspond to numbers. And the numbers, the, the letters are assigned numbers and then words are made of letters and the letters have the numbers and we add up the numbers and then some words have the same numerical value and then oh, 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 you know, we find out, wow, look, these words have these beautiful relationships to one another. Words, letters, and numerical values from a single point and all the letters are the tools combining and recombining into all words and all words referencing one another, connected to one another by form and number. The golden mean, one is to 1.6 and Fibonacci, as I said, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34. Something about language. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna read a little bit of the language pool. I think we have time. Yeah. So I write this, I work on this intermittently and it keeps growing. Language is a river and a lantern, a bridge across time, built of light and sound. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe along and beyond thought. A path unfolds where none was visible. Language is a bridge and a lantern. A light across the river, built from bones and bone. Mm. Breathe in, breathe out, follow breath under and inside thought. A path appears in the distant dark. Language is a house made from silence and light. Explore the foundations where the blessings were whispered, rooms where the secret treasures were concealed. Language is a dance made from blood and hunger the whisper of angels, the angles of consonants. Trace the rivers of air and let the speech of other speech trees sound in your syllables. And as I was printing this out the other day, I added this. <coughs> Language is a seed and a flower, an alphabet in the trees, an underground conversation among neighboring roots. Letters telling the words how to arrange and spell themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. We have two more topics. 
Everyone, do you have questions that you want to ask? Uh, yes? I just want to hear more about the courage of an artist. What, how, how, how you understand what it is to be courageous about it. I'll say one thing about it. Because vi visual art is so visible, and I don't know about Cheslin, I make a lot of unresolved, and if I'm in a certain mood, I'll call it bad work. <laughs> And some of that work I grow into and I find out, I either have to grow more sort of soulfully or technically to finish it and some of it maybe needs to be thrown away. And I think a lot about people learning tango or qigong, they don't have it afterwards or even with music. You don't have all your learning staring you in the face afterwards. <laughs> but with visual art, you have to be willing to believe in yourself enough that you can accept that you're going to, for me, make bad work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my feeling right now is just that I want to name the other two topics because it was just so much a dance for the two of us, saying radiance, beauty, courage, a multiplicity of expressive language, we did those, Judaic, Jewish, values and poetics and renewal. Balance, reciprocity, and renewal are interconnected and entwined in both of our works. Mm -hmm. And if we can, I will just say, maybe we can each offer a few lines for our Juda Jew Jewish and our renewal to bring it to a circle. So I just will say, I live in concert for Jewish, Judaic for me. It's Judaic for me, that's the word I use. I live in concert with the marvelous Zoharic notion which you heard, as above, so below, by which we are called to participate in positive creative intention and action. May the world below be a blessing to the world above. There's a number 231 that's very important to me, which is the notion, the Kabbalistic notion of moving through the 231 gates in order to arrive at the foot of the throne. And the last thing on Jewish, so I consider my practice, which is for almost five decades, as a continuous process of temple, synagogue, shul, tabernacle, nomadic pop-up and mishkan, pop-up mishkan building comprised of sacred space and place, objects, those are just some of the kind, and apparel, costume, garb, and liturgical ritual enactment. Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, I use the word Jewish soul. That's how I think of it. That um, there's a Jewish soul that is expressing my creative work. I sometimes use the phrase creativity in the spirit of service, and that meant a lot of arts and education work for me for 30 plus years. And creativity in the service of spirit. I think. Um, I don't know what else to say right this moment, except it's been a very humbling and deepening experience to be in the show with um, Jewish artists and feeling the way that, and this is jumping ahead a little because the topics are so interwoven, Judaism has had periods of um, rigidity and it also has had periods of great flowering and renewal. And I am moved in Jewish soul by ways, it's something I'm working with in my own life as I get older, how much do I want to update and adapt to be in the world now? But I have been so moved by parts of Judaism that have been able to um, be in our time and update and adapt and look back to what was wise and sweet from the past, but also look forward. Mm -hmm. So you, you brought Judaism and renewal together, so I would land for myself on this line. May we be supported and emboldened by the ever-present possibility of reciprocity, reformation, and renewal. Amen, amen. 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 So I was planning everything, Melanie Pauly, but I I feel like we're in a good
good stopping point. So that will go to another day. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.